A Saudi Arabian-owned farming operation grows year-round in the desert. At the cost of hundreds of billions of dollars, where there is no city, no habitation of any size at all. This is Saudi Arabia, renowned for its vast oil reserves, being the birthplace of Islam and its bustling modern cities. However, it is also an unforgiving desert landscape, home to one of the most inhospitable deserts in the world, the famous Rub al Khali, also known as the Empty Quarter, as it takes up close to a quarter of the country's size. At the start of the 1960s, Saudi Arabia had just 400 square kilometers of fertile land, and knowing that it's one of the only countries on Earth not to have a single permanent river, coupled with an annual rainfall below 150 millimeters, it's no surprise that many have failed to even consider the possibility of sustainable farming in this desert wasteland. But against all odds, Saudi Arabia has somehow managed to transform this harsh landscape into a vast agricultural network of strange-looking fields. These fields have been specifically designed to cultivate a diverse range of crops, from staple foods to exotic fruits. It's truly astounding to witness the transformation of this desert into a lush green forest. However, the question remains, how was this feat even possible? And why do their farmlands have such strange shapes? It all began in 1932, when the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was established by King Abdulaziz Al Saud. Just a couple of years later, 1938 marked a huge turning point when oil was discovered in the Dammam oil field. During the 1950s and 60s, this industry boomed and Saudi Arabia became one of the world's leading oil producers, making this industry the backbone of their economy. While the kingdom was more than bountiful with oil, it fell short in terms of water supplies. For a country where water was more scarce than oil, Farming was only confined to date cultivation and small-scale vegetable production in oases, with the exception of a narrow strip of coastal land to the southwest. Food for the local people was supplied by small plots, and any surplus was sold to passing caravans. But with the country's total farmland being smaller than the city of San Francisco, agriculture wasn't even a remotely viable option, raising the need for reforms and changes. The kingdom's agricultural development began in the 1970s, with the government launching programs to promote modern farming techniques and technologies. They began by establishing the rural infrastructure, introducing roads, irrigation networks and storage and export facilities. One of the main goals of these reforms was to reduce the country's dependence on oil exports and to increase its self-sufficiency in food production. By 1984, they managed to become completely self-sufficient in wheat production, even going as far as becoming an exporter of wheat for over 30 countries. These changes even affect the culinary norms of Saudi Arabia, and dates, which were considered the primary source of nutrition and a staple of their diet, were now mainly being grown for the purpose of global humanitarian aid, donating thousands of tons of dates each year to relieve famine and food shortages, second only to the United States with their contribution to the World Food Programme. But how is water being supplied to the crops in the midst of the barren desert? More than 200 dams collect an estimated 16 billion cubic feet of runoff annually in their reservoirs. But they are not the only source of water. In fact, the groundbreaking source isn't from the atmosphere or from the sea. It's from the past. Over 10,000 years ago, the Middle East was engulfed by grasslands, tropical forests, and was saturated with monsoon rains. Along with all of this, it also had a wide system of rivers. While the Earth's climate may be constantly changing, there are always pieces of history that remain, and these rivers left channels and aquifers buried under thousands of years of soil and sand deposits. So to gain access to these water sources, they figuratively went back in time by going deep underground and tapping into the ancient river systems, which provided plenty of water to support their flourishing agriculture. This water is delivered to the crops using a system called the center pivot irrigation, in which crops are watered by a moving sprinkler system that rotates round a central pivot point. The system is equipped with a series of sprinklers that are positioned along the length of the pipe that rotate to ensure that all the parts of the field receive an equal amount of water. The flat desert terrain gives perfect conditions for this type of irrigation, 
One of the main benefits of this system is the ability to cover large areas of land with relatively little water and with minimal labor required to operate it. Additionally, these systems can also be fitted with sensors, weather monitoring equipment and GPS systems to optimize irrigation and adapt to the weather conditions. Interestingly, it is this method that gives their farm fields their peculiar, almost futuristic-looking circular shape. All things considered, they still have to conserve water and they manage to recycle up to 40% of the water that's used for domestic purposes and have gone to great lengths to ensure sustainability opening up numerous desalination plants to convert seawater into useful potable water, producing nearly 3 million cubic meters of water daily. That's equivalent to 3 billion 1-litre bottles per day. That's a lot of water bottles. This makes them the number one producer of desalinated water in the world. The country's largest desalination plant is the Schwebe 3 desalination plant, which is capable of producing up to 600,000 cubic meters of water per day. And they don't intend to stop there. Last year, the Saudi Arabian Minister of Environment, Water and Agriculture noted that agricultural investments in Saudi Arabia have grown over the past four years by a staggering 400%, creating support for research projects aimed at producing new food crops to increase harvests and develop plant strains with greater resistance to pests. Technological advancements are expected to play a key role in the future of Saudi Arabia's agriculture. One idea under consideration is utilizing Saudi Arabia's west coast and its proximity to the Red Sea to expand the total farmable area under their territory. Even with the existing and developing technology, it is still no small feat. It remains to be seen now just how large-scale these terraforming projects can grow. But we are seeing huge potential and possible new methods of farming emerging in the near future.